sad ovo možeš povući, znači ovo ti je... Okay, we should proceed with our next presentation. That is about making Ruin Scala sync together. Yeah. Wow. Please, Dinko. Thank you. Right. Uh, my name is Dinko and I will be your host for tonight or the next half hour, whatever comes first. Uh, All Together Now is, by the way, a song by the Beatles. Uh, uh, I will be talking about interoperability with uh, two different languages on the JVM. Uh, notably, one is Scala and the other is Groovy. And before that, I will be talking about uh, interoperability with Java because um, if you want to learn to run, you need to learn to walk first. And even before that, I'll have a few words about uh, whys and hows. So let's go with the whys and hows. Uh, so why? Why would anyone use two languages in one project? Uh, both of those languages are considered, well, replacement for Scala, at least by some. Uh, they are considered to be more expressive. Uh, some are more safe. Uh, they should be more productive. So why would we need two languages? And uh, having two languages is actually increasing our technical debt. Uh, debt. Uh, we will have to maintain it and we need to know more. Well, there are some uh, compelling reasons. For us, it was, uh, we wanted to have a, to introduce concurrency into our application and we wanted to have a um, library that would allow us to do so easily. And also we wanted to, to have several processes communicating together, sending messages to one another. So uh, well, there is a concurrency library in Groovy. It's called GPARS. It's OK. But uh, they don't have this other part. And uh, Aka has it well, can kill both of those birds in, with one stone. Um, do you know about Akka? Yeah, it's a library uh, written in Scala. Yeah. That's why we chose, well, uh, we went with it. 
um, uh, the house. We need something to build, right? And um, the obvious choice would be Ant or Maven. I believe this could be done. But, you know, they are using XML. And uh, I really think that XML is a horrible format to, to, to write build scripts in. And, uh, well, the true story. Uh, James Duncan Davidson is the original author of Ant. And he quit programming. He became a photographer. So kids, remember. <laughs> XML is bad, okay? Uh, so we turned to the respective communities to see what they had to offer. Uh, SVT, which stands, or I should rather say, used to stand for Simple Build Tool uh, from uh, Scala community. Uh, and this simple, I guess, is uh, the same as, as simple in SOAP. Uh, do you remember SOAP? Um, but kidding aside, uh, it is a very powerful tool. But um, they are, well, Scala-centric. So uh, it would not be very easy to, to use Groovy from it. So it was, we were left with, hey, Gradle. Uh, Gradle is not just used in a Groovy community. Uh, it's bigger than that. Android, for example. And we've seen that uh, in Java also, uh, as, as I remember, 11 or 15% of people are already using it. Uh, what is important here is that uh, Gradle supports both Groovy and Scala equally well. Uh, and uh, build scripts are written in Groovy, so we know that. And we were actually already using it. This is an example of a Gradle script. Uh, we just need to say, use Groovy, use Scala, to set up a repository. You can set up your own artifactory or, or whatever. Uh, and we say, uh, dependencies, Groovy and Scala. And that is actually all that we need to get us started. I have two more lines here. Uh, one is, well, Scala compiler is not very known for its speed, right? So uh, we need all the help with, that we can get. And uh, with this line, uh, we get incremental compiler for Scala. This other line um, sets the order of compilation. We say here that we'll um, compile Java first, then Groovy, then Scala. And it has ramifications, which we'll see later. So, um, working with Scala, uh, sorry, working with Java. Uh, there was a documentary on BBC, uh, BBC I don't know. Uh, it was called um, Working with Dinosaurs. Well, I'm not drawing any parallels here. Uh, we have four cases. We need to use Groovy, um, Java from Groovy, Groovy from Java, Java from Scala, and Groovy from Scala. Uh, sorry. Uh, Scala from Java, Java from Scala. So um, using Java from Groovy is really trivial, right? Uh, Groovy is designed to be as close to Java as possible. So uh, using uh, Java libraries, no problem. Uh, extending, implementing Java classes, no problem. Uh, overriding methods. Uh, not caring about generics, no problem. Well, we can care about generics, and that is a strong point of Groovy. Uh, but I chose here not to. Uh, we also can see this list is actually Java Util list. And uh, I'm invoking a, in, invoking a method called sum, and uh, list does not have that, that method in Java. But um, Groovy is enhancing some of the Java classes in the standard library, giving them a plethora of uh, different utility functions. So uh, 
remember this psalm when it comes to Java. Uh, to Scala, sorry. Uh, how does one call uh, Groovy from Scala? First of all, if you have um, uh, both Groovy, uh, Groovy and Scala, ha, Groovy and Java in the same project, you need something called uh, joint compilation. And uh, I'll talk about this a bit later. So, um, uh, using Groovy from, from Java is, is uh, well, quite easy, actually, because Groovy is trying to be as much as close as to Java as possible. Uh, so uh, there are few little, well, things that we need to be aware of. Uh, for example, uh, Groovy compiler makes uh, a constructor which allows us to to initiate, initialize Groovy properties. And uh, I was actually quite surprised to see that uh, I couldn't do this in Java. So I have to set the properties by hand. And uh, reading from or setting properties in Groovy is uh, quite easy. But Groovy properties are also Java properties. So we have getter and a setter. A Groovy compiler takes care of that. Um, using closures is uh, quite common in Groovy. We have a, uh, we have it here. Closure is a second parameter. We call it, right? Invoke it. And uh, from Groovy, it is quite trivial to use it, right? But from Java, well, you can't do this from Java. But on the other hand, this is how you use it. You um, instantiate an uh, anonymous class. And this is actually the Java way, right? We've seen this code a lot of times. What you also need to do uh, to know is that you need to write a do call method. And uh, there is no do call method in, in a closure class. But somehow uh, Groovy searches for this do call method. When it finds it, it invokes it here, right? All in all, oh, sorry, about joint compilation. Uh, what is it good for? Well, it resolves this uh, uh, circular dependencies, right? When you have a Java code that uh, uses Groovy code, and then you have a Groovy code that uses Java code. The problem here is how to compile this. Because uh, if you try to compile Java, you can't because uh, Java code depends on Groovy code. And if you try to compile a Groovy, you can't because it depends on Java code. So the solution is something called joint compilation. And uh, Groovy compiler does that in the following steps. Uh, it makes, first, it compiles Groovy code, but not to its fullest. It just makes a uh, interface, uh, methods and classes, but with no implementation. Uh, those are stubs. Then it puts those stubs on a Java class path, then it invokes Java compiler. And now Java compiler can compile Java because it has stubs. And uh, the last step is Groovy compiler again that can now compile Groovy code because it has Java code compiled. Uh, all in all, using Java and Groovy together is okay, quite nice. Uh, because of the things that I've mentioned Mostly, Groovy tries so hard. Uh, there are some things that can't be used. For example, this dynamic metaprogramming stuff, which can't be used from Java. And uh, Groovy 2.3 recently introduced something called traits. Those would be um, interfaces with uh, default methods, if you know about uh, Java 8, but also with state. And it's sort of not straightforward to use from Java. Anyway, I think that uh, Duke is happy. And if duty is happy, I'm happy. Uh, now, Java from Scala. It is mostly the same story. Uh, you can easily use Java libraries. But also, there are some words here. Uh, some of them are as follows. Uh, Scala has its own collection libraries. 
And uh, if you want to use those nice, this is the same method that we've seen in Groovy, right? With that sum. Uh, so if we want to use those nice utility methods, we need to convert those uh, Java libraries, or uh, Java classes, uh, uh, Java collections to Scala collections. That is why this is this Java converters here, and we say a Scala. And then we could use some, but huh, uh, Scala being statically compiled language with a sophisticated type system does not allow us that. There is, of course, method sum, but in a uh, Scala lingo, lingo uh, there is no numeric type class uh, implemented for uh, Java integers. So we could do our own, or we could just use the next best thing, some other method. Um, there is also this uh, cultural difference. For example, uh, Scala people are quite uh, sensitive about nouns. They don't like them. And uh, Java people are not so much. So if uh, uh, Scala uses Java class, and uh, that would be the one, right? And, uh, well, what does this method return? It returns a string, but it might also return a null. And uh, Scala people don't like that. So they put walls or um, guards on the boundaries with Java. They wrap that value inside this class called option, and then they can, they can do things with, with that value. Uh, and they are sure that here, this won't be null. Uh, if there is a null, this piece of code won't be executed. It is this branch then. Uh, and the option class is actually quite similar to that optional class in Java 8. So uh, this is quite a bit of code for a simple task. Yeah. But, uh, well, this is the way it is often done. Scala from Java. It is also well, a similar story with Groovy because oh, in, Groovy and Scala are compiled to Java bytecode and Java sees them as Java code. But also there are some interesting things here to notice. First, we can use values in a constructor. Uh, this is this ID property that I had in Groovy too. But reading and writing to it is uh, interesting because there are no getters and setters. Well, this is a getter. And this interestingly looking method is a setter. So ID underline dollar EQ. Uh, we could have getters and setters, but we had to annotate uh, this property with a bin, bin property annotation, which I chose not to, to make things more interesting. Uh, Scala allows for, uh, oh, that is it. Scala allows for uh, in also interesting method names. For example, arrow. And uh, how can we use those, those methods in Java? Well, quite simply, we write dollar minus dollar greater. What can be more simple than that? Uh, Scala also allows uh, some Unicode characters in their names, and that would be like um, uh, dollar U and then Unicode code. Uh, story with, uh, with functions is quite the same as with closures in Groovy. Uh, this is our closure from Groovy, right? And our do call is apply. Unlike Groovy, apply does really exist. Uh, so about Java and Scala, well, uh, can be used, of course. Uh, it is better for a developer to take care of, I mean, to, to really be careful when designing a Scala class to, to interoperate with Java. Otherwise, uh, well, things can get interesting. Apart from those things that I've shown, uh, there are some concepts within Scala and Java that can't be easily mapped. Uh, for example, uh, Scala has something called abstract types, which there is no equivalence of it in Java. Java has enums and Scala doesn't. So 
Duke here is scratching his head. Uh, he's sort of ambivalent. Now, if we pull Java out, what do we get? Well, basically, we've seen what we can get. Uh, all those slides before that code that I've shown you. Uh, well, it's going to be actually a bit easier because uh, as Scala and Groovy are quite expressive languages, we can help ourselves, ourselves a bit. But there is one thing that stands out when one uses Scala and Groovy, and that is uh, there is no joint compilation. You, you can only do that between Scala and, uh, and uh, Java and between Groovy and Java. And you can't do that between Groovy and uh, Scala. So that is a problem, and I think that uh, Duke doesn't like that. So, uh, uh, you, could, you could see on, this, on that slide with uh, Gradle that I said that uh, we compile Groovy first and then Scala. That is because, well, in our code, uh, we had much more dependencies on, from Scala to Groovy, on Groovy, so we did it this way. And say you have a Groovy class, you have, you have a Scala class, and now Groovy, Groovy class tries to, to use Scala class. Any takers? How would you compile this? Because you compile Groovy first, and uh, you, can't, you can't do this because uh, you, you have a de dependency on Scala. And there is no joint compilation. No? <laughs> well, if there is no joint compilation, you became one. You, became the comp you become the compiler. So you write Scala class in Groovy, of course, without implementation. Then Groovy is quite happy to compile Groovy code and you can compile Scala code later. Uh, so in summary, well, uh, if one is careful, then uh, interoperability is achievable, maybe even easy. Uh, but there are some uh, frictions, biggest of them being, well, at least for me, uh, not having a JOT compile mode. And um, other things that we've seen before, that is uh, conversion between data structures, uh, uh, Groovy closures versus Scala functions, uh, and all those different programming idioms that one can see. And uh, thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you for the mic. Now my question would be, if you, for instance, had some um, uh, expression language and you would want to use Groovy for it, and then you would enable the users to enter the expressions, uh, and then evaluate them on the fly, but in Java. Is there some sort of way to do that? Uh, to use it as a domain specific language or something similar? Um, not quite sure yeah. what you mean by expression language. Uh, okay, you would have, a, for instance, there's some kind of uh, admin, and you would want to raise a notification in certain situations. For instance, if some flag appears or some conditions are met, but you would like to leave it up to be configured by an administrator. And then you would uh, leave a Groovy, you would, for instance, let him to use a Groovy script or something like that with that syntax, but then you would want to evaluate it, evaluate that in Java sort of on the fly or something like that. Is there a way to do that? So to... you have like a DSL in Groovy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? And um, you feed it your own uh, script, yeah. Okay. right? Yeah, something. Um, well, you can uh, control Groovy from, Scala, from Java easily. There is, um, well, several classes, Groovy shell and Groovy. Well, so you will compile your script from uh, Java using Groovy. 
Ruby compiler. Okay. Right? And that would be it. Uh, uh, your script will uh, return a result, which you can evaluate in Java. It's a, uh, I would say, a common scenario. And if, if you understand me or if we uh, understood each other. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I understood. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have you tried upgrading to JDK 8? And have you encountered any problems while doing that? Well, uh, I haven't used JDK 8. Um, Groovy 2.3 supports JDK 8. Uh, 2.4, which will shortly be released, I guess, even more. Uh, Scala 2.11 also supports JDK 8, but 2.12 will, will be uh, JDK 8 will be the least common denominator. I mean, uh, well, that will support only JDK 8. Uh, uh, you can, in Groovy 2.3, use, uh, I believe, uh, I haven't tried it, uh, JDK 8 lambdas, as well as, uh, or uh, would be um, Groovy closures on lambda places, right? On, in Java code that, that uh, expects lambdas. So, uh, I don't know if this answers your question. Okay. It's... I understand, thanks. Uh, you said that uh, Groovy recently got uh, support for the trades. Right. So is it possible to mix in a trade from Scala into a Groovy class? How are you doing the uh, connect connecting your Groovy application with the ACA? Are you mixing in the trades from the ACA into Groovy classes or what? Well, um, trades as seen from Java or Groovy are interfaces. But it's not the whole story. There is this uh, uh, interface name, dollar after it. And so, um, as I said, if you design your Scala part uh, well, then you, would, you won't have uh, problems using from Java or Groovy. But if not, then uh, you'll have to manage. Uh, <laughs> uh, would that be anything? Uh, did you? Well, did I answer your question? Okay. Thank you. Any more? Thank you very much. <laughs>